Good morning. I'm so happy to be here. I've been here in this church several times, but I've not had the opportunity to to mount the pulpit. And I want to thank God for Calvary Vision for having given me this opportunity to preach His Word. It's like a farewell uh, message I want to give because I'll be leaving next Friday after this Friday to Cameroon. And I feel that we should reason together in the Word of God and bring our hearts together and worship God. I want to thank my brother for the passages he read. The passages that always touch my heart when salvation is concerned. Um, This morning, uh, I will be talking on the title, Values and Attitudes That Make Music. Values and attitudes that make music. I will a little bit be, be gentle because of my accents so that you can be able to get me and I want you to listen good. Values and attitudes that make music. I've always known music to be something beautiful, something that gladdens the heart. Music is something that makes you reflect on something. Music is something that makes you happy when you are sad. In my context in Africa, some women sing music even when their husbands are dead at the funeral place. They cry by singing. And I had never known I was going to be a pastor because I'm a very weak person. I don't like to see people cry. And one day I attended a funeral service where a young man died. And the wife was singing the history of their marriage through a song. And as a pastor, one of our ethical advice is that we don't cry. Because if you cry, you make the suffering people cry more. We comfort them. But at least Jesus cried once when Lazarus died. So this woman was singing this song. And the song affected me more because, you know, you put a history in music. And I cried more than the other funeral. So and I, I was unfortunate for me, I was wearing my, my Reverend Nepalese, so it was difficult for me to hide because it's white. I keep crying. It was a beautiful music. And the pains of the death of the young man, I never felt the pains again, but I felt lost in that funeral service. So values and attitudes that make music. In John 3.16, one of the values I saw there Is God himself as a person. God is value. And I I struggle to make a definition for the word value and attitude so that I will have fit it inside my sermon. The regard you have for something or somebody that you see the person of great importance, high esteem. You esteem something so highly, you esteem the person so highly, is what we call a value. You're attributing value to something. You only attribute value to something depending on how much worth you see in that thing. How much usefulness. How much advantages you see in that thing or you want to get from that thing. How much benefit, gain, profit, good, help, or merit you see in that thing or in that person. That word value can also be seen as a verb. If you want to use it as a verb, you say to value, you say to value, simply means to consider someone. You really consider someone or something to be of great importance. To have a high opinion of something. You're attributing value to that thing. Then attitude. Simply the settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. Listen, it's a a settled way. It's not a toast way, a settled way. I'm certain about this thing. The kind of feeling you have or the kind of thoughts you have about something you value. It's an attitude. That's something you value. Some people will use some synonyms to explain what I'm struggling to say. We're saying that attitudes are reflected in a person's behavior. 
That is why Jesus said, by their fruit, you will know them. So if you have a value, what will cause people to know that you value this thing in a high esteem is the way you behave towards that thing. You understand me? And so you can take some synonyms for the word uh, attitude, like view or viewpoint, outlook, perspective, stance, standpoint, position, inclination, approach, and reaction. All these are synonyms attributed to what I've just explained behind. The word attitude. You see, when you read John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world. Meaning that he had value for the world. And the world in question is not necessarily or contextually the rivers and the trees. Of course, he loves the rivers and the trees. The world in perspective is humankind. How do you know his humankind? He said, for the reason of his love, he abandoned his rainbowed circle throne and came down for the salvation of man. And David said, Lord, how do you so esteem man to the extent where you've made the content of the sea and the content of the land? You've made the rocks to vomit out water. You've made the heavens to bring on sun and light. Just to satisfy a human being? Can you imagine? That the sunlight that we see in the rest of the days is light given to us by God. Look at this little one that he gives us in the houses. We pay bills every month. And if God were to ask us the outside loud, loud light bill, I mean the outside light bill. You see how the rivers flow everywhere? The oceans the water we drink that is channeled through the tap water is tapped from on the ground. God had never asked us water bills. But the little that comes into our homes, we pay water bills. If God were to ask us all the water bills. You see, my vision is blurred because from birth, one of my eyesight is very low. And I have to buy glasses. But you see, some people see so bright and so strong. If God were to ask you vision, bill. In my junior brother, ask my father that I'm tired of you. I want to pay you all, everything you spent on me. I want to pay you. I don't want to go my way. Charge me. My father said, no. You stayed in my wife's womb for nine months. Each month is $2,000. Times nine months is $18,000. We call that womb bill. Some of us stayed 13 months. If God were to ask you just a womb bill. You see love? Love in the superlative. That love is because God values us. God values you. Have you ever appreciated your eyes? Have you seen somebody without a nose? How the person can look like? Do you appreciate the legs that you have? And some people are on wheelchairs almost all of their life. Value. And so I will want my brother to put us a song by somebody called Sarah Adams. Somebody who valued God and asked. She saw how much God loves her and she wrote this song to back out a sermon that his pastor preached. You just listen to the, to the song a few minutes and I will say something. I'm almost done with my sermon. I have an objective of my sermon here.
when you value something and you value somebody, your desire will be nearer. You want to be close to the person. It is quite sad today how people treat God, whom they say they love. If you have to evaluate your affection towards God, most of us, our affections towards God are just 2%. A good number of us are just doing religion. Just religion. A good number of us just want to belong. These are our kind of people who just want to belong. How many people earnestly really want to be nearer God? Psalms 42. The psalmist says, As a deer pants after streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet you? Or meet with my God. Maybe in times of distress like tears have been my food day and night. Why people say to me, where is your God? A yearning to be close to your God. I look at young people, I look at old people, the way they worship God. I ask how much do they really value God? God shows us that when you value something, you come close to that thing. He abandoned his rainbow circle throne and came to earth. He rent himself naked and mounted a cross of shame and disgrace. Isaiah 53 says, he was despised by all, even though he came for them. And he says, he says, see, when you untie a goat, it looks a way home to his father, But my people, instead of coming closer to me, they go very far away from me. They say they praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. And the songwriter says, nearer my God to thee. I am looking for some people to love God deeper. That is my objective. I'm just looking for some people who will love God deeper. One night, my wife woke me up. And told me, just tell me with your mouth that you love me. (laughs) That was strange. I know I love her. I know I love my wife. I give her what she wants. We talk. 3 a.m. in the night, she woke me up. Say with your mouth you love me. I say, oh, these Nigeria films will bring me trouble. Because she watches a lot of uh, these films acted in Nigeria. I said, I turn this way, I turn this way. I said, I have given you this one, I have given you this one. I say, I know, but I want you to tell me that you love me. Then I looked at her and said, what is the problem? I said, don't you notice that your distance from me is further? You give me money, you give me the things I need, but you are very far away from me. I no longer feel you in my heart. Our distance of love is far. You don't love me much again. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me to tell her you are sorry and adjust your life. So I told her that night that I'm sorry and I'm adjusting, even though she's talky. So when I come back now, I'm struggling to lift her up because, you know, I'm small. I'm struggling to do the things that women like, you know. I'm struggling to lift her up and she's heavier than myself. And after a few days, she told me, ah, you are coming. You are coming. I said, I'm still coming. I said, I'm still coming. I said, you are coming. There should be that passion for the person you love. When you attribute value for something, make an effort to get closer. Christ needs you to be more closer. You see, the end time is very close. And God's spirit is very far from people's hearts. People are so religious. The last part of the sermon is that when God so loved, he gave. It's a very difficult thing to come very close to God, so it requires sacrifice. I remember when Pastor preached last week, he talked about sacrifice. You know, you live in a community where everything is highly programmed. And some of us have made so good program and have left God out of the program. We only just do when an opportunity arises. You know what it costed him? 
his only son. It may not be very strong in this culture, in the culture where I come from. A little bit, they say when a woman marries, she goes out of the family. But when a man marries, he brings to the family. So the Africans have a kind of thought that is not the best towards men. It's like they give a little value to men, which I don't like that because I appreciate all the sexes. But in a traditional sense, they are saying that when you have a male child, he increases the family. That's their own notion behind them. Then you get an African person that has only one son. Then it's required of him to give up that son for another person's benefit. You know, it takes love to give that son out. And God gave his own only son. He made a sacrifice. These last days, God wants us to make a sacrifice of those treasure things that we treasure so much. That keeps us a very well, far away from God and we become just routine worshipers and come to him. I'm going to Africa. I'm going to remind my brothers in Africa that I got closest to God and just getting closer to God. And I'm requesting that. You can make a life dedication again. The Catholics are very good at doing that. After some years, they say, go back to the church and rededicate your marriage again and renew your marriage vows. They are already married. They are not divorced. They are not even separated. And then you have to look at your partner and say, Julie, <laughs> I will love you and keep loving you and keep until death do we part. And then they change, exchange rings again. That is a moment of rededication. A moment of reoccupying yourself again. Embracing Christ and embracing more and stronger. In this our community where we live here, the way things are, if you don't go very close to God, he goes very far from you. He says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. That is my concern. And I will want my brother now to play the two stanzas of the or that last song. I will request for prayer. We may not do the same kind of prayer we used to do. I just want to pray with a few persons, a short prayer. Those who want to get deeper in the love of Jesus. They want to reflect again about all that God has done to them. And they say, Lord, I feel in my heart that my affection for you is reduced. Yes, sometimes I may offer lip services. But the distance of my heart with yours is far. And I want to get a little closer. I want to feel you a little better. I want to experience you more. I want to submerge myself in yours. I want to pray with those people. Just want to make a prayer of a rededication. Yes, my brother. Another cry of somebody who also... had no reason to write such a song. The history reveals that almost from birth, she was an invalid. And in the pains, in pains, he wrote this song and told the Lord, I come to thee. I've just come to thee. 
You are the only one that can cleanse me and give me satisfaction, even in my pains. Pastor Tim, you can come. Is there anybody we want can pray for? Want a deeper, a deeper affection of God? You just stand up and want to pray for you, want to make a special prayer. When such a sermon is preached, it's like the river has been stirred. And God is looking at the hearts of the people who want to get closest to him. Who want to feel that deep affection again. Who want to renew that relationship. Who want to say, oh Lord, here I come again. I want to pray with such a person. And come up. Thank you. I want to call Pastor Tim to come up. We'll join our hands in prayer with such people.